You're listening to 102.3 Starbase Radio. Scenes from Starbase, August 20th through 24th, 2024. Hey, that's cool. Out here at the production site, you can see the elevator shaft being assembled. A very large crane to assemble a very small part there. Lift it all the way up to the top and then insert it into the top of Tower B. There's Module 9. I'm going to scoot over there next to that massive crane. You can see the lifting jig already on the crane there. And they'll swing it around and attach it to the top of Module 9. Now, when Module 9 gets up to the top, that's going to be the last expected module on top of Tower B over there. Over on Tower A, you can see they're removing these catch pads that they had put up there on the chopsticks. Part of the catching system for Starbase, Starship. There's one from Mary. The reflecting pool, we call that site, with the sunrise behind the launch pad. And then there's that massive crane lifting Module 9 all the way up to the top of the second tower. That part that sort of sticks off the left-hand side at the very top, there you go, you can see the pulleys in there that are the massive drawwork systems for the chopsticks. Speaking of, back over on the first tower, they've been doing an awful lot of work on these chopsticks, y'all. You can see they have all those reinforcements in there on some of the major welds. They're doing it on not all the welds, but all the major welds on the... Uh, can I say Mark I chopsticks? Back at the production site, that's ship 31. Continuing with the tile replacement. Every time we cut to this shot, there's like four more, t four more tiles up on top of it. This is a tough shot. We're going to move this camera at some point, y'all. Uh, that telephone pole is a little wacky. But that's a view back towards Massey's. On August 22nd, this looks like the sun rising. You can tell from the lighting on the orbital launch mount and all the work they've done up there on the chopsticks preparing for the catch attempt. It really does, look, look, honestly, I know they say the ships are ready to fly, but the amount of work that they've been doing on the chopsticks, it really makes me wonder if the chopsticks were ready to catch. It just looks like a lot more work than, oh, I guess we have some time. We'll just do some extra work while we're waiting. It, it really seems to be more involved than that. Over that way, that's sort of across from the filling station. And you can see both the towers there. All the way up on the ship quick disconnect arm. So you need to do some work up there as well. Back over the production site, you can see the little Stargate building sort of nestled in there, but the parking garage in the back is nearing completion. And there is that Mechazilla de decal. <laughs> We're gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see it. Over on Ship 30. Ship 31, back in the high bay. I appreciate that fan up there on top of the scaffolding. A lot of people are asking if the parking garage is complete, you can actually see vehicles in the first two levels there. I guess that would be the, the first three levels because those would be the first two above ground plus the ground level. And there's the Star Factory expansion that's sort of moving over there towards that area that they weren't building in. Almost right up against the office building. They had that little patch of land back in there. There, were, there was the uh, disagreement about. And I think they got that sorted out and it looks like SpaceX is moving in. Long range shot from Jack here. Sort of on the back of the production site. There you go. See along the side of Highway 4 in the flats. Over here at the moat in front of Massey's, the cell phone tower there, but we've got the test tank. 16 that was recently lifted into the test stand there, where they're going to do some structural testing on it. Look at this. It's been a long time since we've seen this, but Mary Boca Chica Gal with the stakeout of the Raptor van 
caught four raptors coming in. We don't see that very often anymore because they sort of unload them back around the corner. They have areas that you can't really see from the road anymore. But uh, this time I believe there's some equipment in the way. And that forced them to unload the Raptors from the Raptor van. This is likely coming down from McGregor. Drives down from McGregor, delivers them here to Starbase. That's like Waco down to Starbase is what? Six, maybe seven hours if you're carrying rocket engines? Faster if you're not. Not confirm nor deny whether or not I could make that drive in less than a, a rocket engine delivery truck. Now, if you if you turn the rockets backwards, it would probably be very unsafe to drive the truck in that manner. We put a lot of footage on this because we just don't get to see that anymore. The office building is continuing to come right along here. Beams on a truck. <laughs> and in this scene, we can see beams on a truck. Nice. Another one of the orbital launch sites. Sometimes you just walk past it and the lighting is so nice. The clouds are so, there's not a lot of clouds. It's just a beautiful shot, so you have to take it. And that is an awful lot of ops. AWP, aerial work platforms. And these brackets that they're installing on here. That's just so much work on the uh, chopsticks. More work, I mean, just look at that. It's gonna, we're gonna have to call it Frankensticks or something like that after all these stitches holding it together. I just, you can see all the gray areas. See the gray areas that have been reinforced? In some of them, you can see the stitching. They just haven't been repainted yet, so it's really obvious where that reinforcement has occurred. There's the carriage that slides up and down the rails on the tower, moving the chopsticks along. Good close-up of the orbital launch mount there. Orbital launch mount hasn't seen a lot of love lately. Another angle of the cutie arm. Remember, that cutie arm would swing towards the camera here to get out of the way of the raptor flames that lift off. This looks like we've gone all the way around to get a different angle on that second tower. Still looking for signs of an OLM. Should I guess that this is the first tower? Because it's already got the lightning rod on the top and it had all the cameras. So that would be the first one. Back over here, ship 33 aft barrel section. Gonna be one of the new Starship designs coming up, which is why we're all like, oh, you do it, look at this. It's what, it's a bit of stainless steel that's been rolled into a building. And then the garage door went down. The Starcat <laughs> has been around since Mark I, nice. There's Ship 33 being put on top of the aft section. I mean, that's a massive candy crane right now. It's sped up. I mean, you can tell with the workers attaching the pieces that it's sped up, right? But uh, you don't really notice that sway if you're watching it in real time. Gratuitous top-to-bottom pan for Mr. Jack Byer here. You can see some dents in it as well. Those dents will pop out when they pressurize it. Now, actually, the ones on the top, I wonder if they will pop out. It depends on exactly how they put the cargo area together because the previous ones, I don't believe they would have been able to pressurize that. It looks so cool when it's lit up like that. And look at this. They actually attached the lower section to the rest of the Starship, and they picked it all up together. They're going to put it over on one of those welding stands, if I'm not mistaken. This looks like another angle of the same operation, maybe. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> it is truly the machine that builds the machines, y'all. That's a gap on the chopstick rails there. You can only see it really quickly, but uh, this looks like the replacement for it. Hey, look at that. You see the bag that's going with it? A lot of times some of the hardware will be added into those bags so they stay with the segments. You don't want to lift it up and be like, oh no, where's all the bolts for this? Anyways, folks, we continue on our commentary on the daily summary videos here. Massive thanks to everybody out there, Mary and Jack and 
the SBL Ops. I'm Doss with NSF. We'll catch you later.